All right, hello everyone. I'm assuming you can hear me, it sounds like the mic's on. All good? All right, um, so my name is Cassie Chuljan and I'm a data scientist at Dataiq. And today we're going to be talking all about plugins and how you can use them to extend Dataiq and the platform into limitless directions. So I have a question for everyone. Who here listens to music while you're working? See a lot of hands raised. Um, and so it turns out, I also listen to music while I work. Um, studies show that when listening to music, there is support for an increase in creative problem solving and task performance by workers, in this case, computer systems developers. So I'm assuming here in the room we have quite a few, maybe computer scientists, uh, data scientists, engineers, analysts. So all of us are kind of in the same boat, and it sounds like music is really gonna help us do a better job. So you might wonder why I'm bringing this up to start my talk about plugins today. And that's because you wouldn't think of Dataiq as a platform where you involve music really at all in your day-to-day -day job. But say you're a developer and you're working in Dataiq and you wanna be really productive and every time you go to Spotify to turn on your playlist, you get distracted. So you think to yourself, okay, um, somehow I wanna make myself the ultimate productivity playlist all while staying within DSS. And this is completely doable using plugins in Dataiq. So, right here we have a little interface, um, and this is called Make Playlist. And so I'm gonna ask someone in the audience to shout out an artist and a genre for me, please. All right. And genre? <laughs> Put rock. <laughs> and we're gonna go with uh, 20 songs. And so if I click this button here, hoping the Wi-Fi is a... Uh, not gonna have an issue. And it may not be as good of a playlist as the intro music we were all just listening to before the presentation started. But this is going to spit out a recommendation that hits directly from the Spotify API and sends out the 20 most common songs that it would recommend for you to listen to. So we can see the job is running. And now we jump into our playlist and we've got a list here, 20 songs. Do we get a good vote on this? Are you gonna be productive listening to this music? Maybe, maybe not, no, nope, I see some shaking heads. So this brings me exactly to where I wanna be. So I right now have a playlist that I can generate for myself within Dataiq, but for me, this might be different from everyone else. And so I could have done this in a Python code environment, right? I could have easily taken some code, created an API connection, and then called in and put in my song recommendations that I wanted to hear, and this would be a playlist perfectly generated for me but not everyone is gonna have that same kind of interest and in what is gonna make them the most productive. And so that's where plugins become really powerful in Dataiq because you can take a code solution and essentially extend it out to be reused by anyone on your team, regardless of whether or not they're familiar with coding, they're familiar with clicking, who they are. Um, this is how you can extend the platform. So before I get too deep into this, I wanna take a step back and talk about the agenda of what we're gonna go through today. So first of all, I wanna explain what is a DSS plugin and how we can use them in DSS. And then we're actually gonna dive into a demo where I'll show you all how you can take code from scratch and generate a plugin that has a nice customizable visual interface that users can input their own parameters and do something like what we just showed. Um, and then to, to wrap it all up, it's why plugins are so powerful and how we see our customers using these day in and day out. Um, and then how, if you're interested in what you're learning here today, you can do some continued learning and get involved in bringing pr plugins to your platform and your team. So first of all, what is a DSS plugin and, and why might we use them? So Dataiq plugins are essentially an extension for any functionality that you can do in the platform. And this could look like anything from enriching your data by connecting to an external service or provider. So for example, connecting to a maps provider like Google Maps API to take some of your coordinates in a data set and geocode or reverse geocode them. This could look something like increasing the impact for your stakeholders who are consuming your insights. Um, and so this could be, for example, using the modest fair, model fairness report plugin to take your end-to-end -end project and actually add explainability to that output so that whoever is consuming it has more context and has more idea and a better idea into the impact of your insights. This could also look something like satisfying industry requirements that are specific to your company. Um, so you could be using the GDPR plugin to use model compliance and apply uh, you know, specific regulatory policies to ensure that your company and your team is staying within the boundaries that you need to stay in. 
And then finally, this could be something as simple as sharing the output that you have in DataIQ with other people, platforms, and systems. So for example, connecting to Tableau or to Power BI to export all of the insights and data sets that you create and manipulate within DataIQ. And so these are just four examples of really powerful ways that you can use the plugins in DataIQ to take what is the core functionality of the platform and extend it in many different directions. So now how do you actually use those plugins in DataIQ? The first way is by going to the plugin store and downloading from a whole host of existing plugins that have been built and supported by DataIQ. And this is really interesting because when you think about a platform, it's always gonna be built to have some boundaries, to have some limitations and constraints as to what you wanna do. You know, DataIQ is an end-to-end -end machine learning visual ML software platform. There's so many things that you can do, but it's never gonna encompass everything that you might wanna do, whether that be integrating a new machine learning model that is something that hasn't been put on the roadmap yet, whether that be, you know, taking a niche process that you and your team repeat day in and day out, or whether that be actually generating you know, some code and having that be reused without having to copy and paste it between all of your users. So whatever the need may be, plugins are the way that you're able to take those specific processes and integrate them into the tool. And so one example that I have here is time series. Um, so for multiple years now, majority of our customers have relied on our time series forecasting plugin um, to be able to make predictions into the future, right? And this was something that was not attached to a core functionality of DataIQ and our machine learning offerings. However, in the background, the product team has been working on adding that time series forecasting to the roadmap. And so for the, those years when it wasn't a part of the product, customers were still, still able to leverage time series forecasting by using that plugin. However, I don't know how many of you were just at the presentation before this um, where the V11 demo was shown, but now it's actually officially being released as a new functionality that is core and a feature of the machine learning at DataIQ. So this is a way that you can see how customers can kind of get ahead of what's being released on the roadmap, be ahead of the time, be agile, and still integrate those features that might be coming, might not be coming, might be niche to them, or might be something that just hasn't had the chance to be integrated yet. So on top of all of those plugins that are already built and supported by DataIQ and are available in the plugin store, you're also able to take all of that code and customize it by creating development plugins out of existing plugins today. So all you have to do is convert those existing plugins into development and add your own recipes, components, really customize it to whatever your needs are. Um, and there's no need to start from scratch in this. All of the code is readily ava available in Git, which makes it really easy for you to take something that's already been built by the Data IQ team and make it specific for your needs. And then the third option is the most customizable. Um, and this is a way for you to completely start from scratch and you can build new plugins simply using code. Write a Python recipe, an R recipe, and input a customizable visual interface where users can input their own parameters. And you can essentially share this with all personas that are using your Data IQ instance. And this way, you can extend Data IQ to really fit anything, such as generating a Spotify recommendation playlist, um, which, which really, as we know, is not a part of what Data IQ is intended to do. So the plugin store is the first of the three ways that you can access all of those readily developed and supported plugins by Data IQ. Um, right now, we have over 100 plugins, and this is constantly growing every day. So all you do is look at the, on the left, you can see up here that we have the tags for each of those categories of plugins. You can scroll through kind of like you're on the app store, view different details, check out the components that are available as part of that plugin, and then install that for your instance. And from the minute you've installed it, every user on that instance is able to use the visual interface and its integrated features in the different parts of the platform. Now on top of developing, or on top of downloading all of those existing plugins, you also can use those plugins um, also within the plugin store here and convert those into development plugins. So take any plugin that you've downloaded, simply click on the button that says convert to development plugin and you've got yourself a code that you can edit and change to fit the needs of your team. So you could be adding in new components, 
You could be adding in new recipe. You could be adding, pulling out code that's hard coded in and creating it into different parameters. Um, but this is a really nice way to not have to fully start from scratch. Um, and it's, it's really cool because all of the code is open source, so you're able to access it freely. Um, and then pull this into your environment and, and just take it one step further from the plugins that you began with. And then our final point is how you can extend Dataiku beyond the platform by developing and sharing your own plugins. Um, and so as we mentioned earlier, this is a really easy way to take one coder's solution in your organization and unlock it for every individual who interacts with the platform. So we're gonna do a little live demo. Um, and right now, what we're gonna be developing is from scratch that plugin that we demonstrated right at the beginning. So if we start in our flow, um, let's just take a look at the flow. Right now it looks very basic, and we've got a Python recipe here. And for those of you who are familiar with Python in you know, some way or another, uh, you can see that we've just got some you know, uh, packages that we're importing. We created our API key, um, which is specific to the user's credentials. Um, we've established uh, an, an API handle so that we can query uh, the Spotify API. And now we've put in some, some parameters. So for example, in this recipe, we're looking for um, the Beatles uh, and, the, and the genre is rock. And we're asking for you know, the top 20 songs that Spotify recommends when we input the Beatles. And we have a line here that queries Spotify um, and, and gets back that result that we then iterate through and output some of the different you know, things that we wanna see. So in, in that output data set, we saw all of these different features about the songs. And we're gonna slowly um, input or append those onto a data frame. And the last step would be to output that data frame as a data set in data IQ. And so this is really pretty much exactly what you all saw in that beginning visual interface. But right now, it's just a piece of code. So who could use this? Someone who is familiar with coding someone who has received maybe a copy and paste of this and, and isn't really sure what's going on. Um, say I wanted to change and add on um, some different, cr different um, criteria or aspects of the song that I wanted to be brought through into the, into the output data set. This makes things really complicated when you're relying on copying and pasting code, whether that be from a skill level or whether that just be from a maintenance level going forward, right? And so what we wanna do here is actually wrap this in a visual interface that's gonna be managed, from cent managed centrally within the instance and output that for every user to use. And it's really easy to do in Dataiku. All we'll click here is Actions. And you can see here that we have a button that says Convert to Plugin. And this is all we have to do, really. Um, and so as you can see, plugins turn code recipe into reusable visual recipes. So we're going to target a new plugin, uh, because this one isn't existing, and let's go ahead and call it Spotify. And then we wanna give the new plugin recipe an ID, so we'll call this, typing under pressure is always fun, generate playlist. Um, and then all we would do is click this button right here. And I'm not gonna do this all live, just in case the, the, the Wi-Fi or the instance decides to have an issue, but essentially what this does is it jumps you into this nice new interface that is all pre-populated by Dataiku. And so you can see one of the main things that you notice is on the left, we have this file system structure that has been automatically generated for us. And right now we'll start with this recipe.json file. So this is where you're able to customize how that UI is going to appear for all of the users. This is where you'll maybe add some metadata, um, what's the name of that plugin, what is the description, what's it doing. Um, any information that you might need to give to the user so that they know how to use it. Um, you can add an icon, so this is where you're able to make it a little more recognizable and customizable for the users that are seeing it on the instance. And then we get down into some of the more technical things like are you associating any data sets as input or output sources? And then finally, one of the really key factors about a plugin is the parameters. And so as we remember when we were just going through that Python recipe, everything was hard coded in, and, and we don't love hard coding things in, do we? And so you see here that we can actually pull out those different hard coded pieces of information, such as the artist or the genre, the number of songs, and we turn these into parameters that then will be processed when the user inputs information into the plugin itself. 
And continuing down, we also have some credentials. So this is a different kind of parameter that the, that the data IQ uh, plugin interface expects. And so someone else who's using this can then input their preset information for how to connect to Spotify. So once we've configured this uh, JSON file and we're, we're kind of happy for now with how it's gonna look, um, then we're gonna jump into the actual kind of meat of the code itself. And that's the recipe.py file. And so here you have essentially everything that's going on under the hood when I clicked that run button to generate a playlist in Spotify. And so you can see this all looks very familiar. However, um, Data IQ actually has a specific language for how you can access all of those variables and parameters from within the recipe. And so if you can see here, we have get recipe config artist. And this artist value is what we just set in the JSON file as the user to input the artist. And now we can actually utilize this from within the code. And so this is how it's all tied together. And one other thing to note is when you do originally convert your recipe into a plugin, there's going to be a lot of documentation and commented uh, information that will be ap apparent within this recipe itself. And so it's a really nice way to guide you into figuring out how you can set those variables, how you can extract things into parameters. Um, and so it's kind of a, a very user-friendly way to become familiar with how you're transitioning this from a recipe that's specifically code into a user interface that's gonna be easily repeatable and accessed by everyone on your instance. And this is a place that you can come back at any given moment and add edits to if someone else wants to add a new you know, component or add, pull something out, extract it into another parameter. This is really easy to do. Um, this tab is always available for you to edit. And so you can see that I've saved all of the changes I've made. And the final piece is the code environment, which is pretty important inside of, you know, any, anytime you're doing any development and you have dependencies and, and Python packages, it's gonna be important. But what makes this really powerful in plugins is that all the users don't have to actually have any form of interaction with those different, uh, you know, dependencies and environments, right? So in this requirements.txt file, you're actually able to specify any dependencies or packages that should be managed as a part of that code environment. And then once you've built your code environment as a part of that plugin, no user is gonna have to have any form of interaction with that. And so this is another thing that makes it really accessible to the clicker persona out there. So now that we've finished editing our plugin, we know that we can always come back later. Um, let's check out the summary tab here. And you can see a few key things here. So on the left, just like kind of any piece of software, you're gonna wanna have some form of versioning and, and control. And so we can see who the author of this plugin was, we can give it a version, um, and we can also then see the location of it, you know, where did this plugin come from. Another thing that we can quickly touch on is the fact that you're able to add a remote for uh, version control, so you can actually integrate this with Git just like the rest of Data IQ. Um, and that way, if different users are working on plugin components, adding in different features, this can be easily managed from a central repository. The second aspect is that code environment that I mentioned. And so once this code environment has been built and is dedicated specifically for this plugin, no one else has to have any issues or, or bother with this at all. And then finally, you see this called components. And this is where we're gonna kind of jump into the second part of the demo, because right now all I've built for you is a visual recipe, and that's just a simple user interface where you can click in, add parameters, run an input, and generate an output, right? But there's all sorts of different components that can be added to a plugin under the same blanket. So this plugin is called the Spotify API, but just because it's one plugin doesn't mean that it can only do one thing. And so right now you can see that there's two components that exist under the blanket of this Spotify API. And that would be make a playlist, which we just look, learned how to code, but it's also the Spotify credentials that are associated with needing to run this plugin. But there also could be future components that we haven't decided that we wanna add yet. Maybe you want a step where a user can come in and they really don't like a song, so they wanna remove that from their playlist. They just don't wanna to listen to it. That's something that we would add in as a separate component so that those can be either run in tandem or they can be run separately. So if I click here into new component, I'm gonna just do a quick dive into what those different components are and some of the really important or really popular ones that we see with our clients. 
And so the first one is, is a fairly standard one. This is a data set. And so you can essentially incorporate uh, the ability to query or pull in data from any external service, for example, using an API. Um, and this is a, a really important one, especially, you know, say you're working with customers and you'd like to pull in some customer data. Uh, and so if we click on the plus data set button here, we can see that we have the Salesforce plugin available here. So if I click on the Salesforce plugin, I have five different data set components that will pull in the specified information that I'm looking for nicely and neatly as a data IQ data set ready to be you know, transitioned and, and done, you know, different recipes applied to it. And from each of these components, you'll also be able to see the plugin documentation is always available. Um, and so that hyperlink is a quick jump for you to understand who wrote this plugin, the support level from Data IQ, or if it's a plugin that was actually developed by your team rather than the Data IQ team, and then how you're going to use it. Um, and then another, uh, another component that our customers are, find very important, um, and this is kind of on the, on the other side of the spectrum of how plugins can be used by every persona at, at, at within your instance is a macro. Um, and this is really helpful for especially administrators to be able to run any sort of administrative task, whether that be running metrics and checks, whether that be cleaning up an instance, whatever that is, um, the macro is a really nice way to be able to wrap those processes up and schedule them to run. And so this is actually integrated within the uh, interface itself. And we can see there's a specific tab for macros. Now, some of these are going to be automatically installed on your instance, but you're able to en enrich this and enhance how many things can be done via a macro, depending on how many of those plugins you've installed. So we can see that we have a plugin called Cohort Builder installed, and this has two different uh, macros available to, to do different things. And I, I don't have time to unfortunately get into all of these, but as you can see, there's a whole list of plugins and components of how you can integrate all of your custom code into the Data IQ interface itself. And so another one that I'm going to touch on quickly is the pre preparation processor. So for those of you that are familiar with the prepare recipe in Data IQ, this is essentially what you can see here, this little bloom, broom circle. And this is where we have over 90 different processors that are available, and you can take any input data set, apply certain steps to different rows, columns, fields, and output it as an, uh, as an output data set. Um, and, and within this, these 90 processors, they can all be done you know, in one central place, regardless of what sort of manipulation or what sort of tra transformation they're doing. So on the left here, we can see in our processors library a whole host of um, categories. But for example, we can see up here that the first thing I've done is I've actually taken the release date for all of the songs that were generated in my playlist, and I'm going to parse that into a date that can be recognized by Data IQ. And then the second thing that I want to do is maybe I'm curious how many of those songs that have been recommended to me were released on a weekend or a bank holiday. Not sure why I'd want to do that, but if I was just curious where, you know, is there more of an impact, are songs more popular maybe, depending on when they're released? Are people listening to music more on the weekends? Are they listening to music on bank holidays? This is a place where you can flag this and check out if this is a holiday or not. And so, as you can see, these two recipe steps look virtually identical. And that's interesting because the first one is a native part of the platform. So the ability to parse the date, that's really a core capability in Data IQ. But the second one is actually a component of a plugin. And so that brings us to our next point, which is how important and powerful it is that plugins are able to be easily integrated natively into every part of the platform. And so you may not even be aware of how frequently you're using these plugins, but it also it opens up so much possibility for you and your team to take something so niche and so specific to what you're doing and integrate it into the rest of the platform seamlessly. And then our last component that we're gonna dive into is a prediction algorithm. And this one is also really powerful because as data scientists, you know, as much as we would love to use those algorithms that are available as a default on the Data IQ Visual ML platform, we also are going to want to be writing our own or using something that is outside of what DSS offers natively. So in here, 
I'm gonna jump into our modeling tab. And for, for those of you who aren't familiar, this is essentially our visual machine learning interface where you can explore in a lab and take your data sets and generate insights, do different types of um, you know, algorithms and processes. We can handle features from within here. Um, you can set your train test set. All those things that you typically would need to do in, in a Python notebook is actually really easily done in this interface. But that doesn't mean that we can't use the interface just because the algorithm that we're interested in using isn't available as a default in DataIQ. So let's jump into the algorithms tab where we can see all of these top algorithms, you know, random forest, ridge regression. These are the defaults that are selected when I've selected a regression test. However, down at the bottom, we can see this little circle denotates that this is actually provided by a plugin for the GLM plugin. Um, and so this appears just like the others do, but isn't natively available in the platform. And maybe this isn't even something that was available all along, but once you become aware of it or if you're interested in looking for what other algorithms are out there, it's easily installed from the plugin store and transforms what you're able to do in the visual machine learning tab. And if I select this, um, this algorithm and turn it on, you can also see that it fits in seamlessly with the rest of those algorithms. And so we have these parameters that users are able to fill in just in the same way that they would say they were up here in the random forest, which is natively available as a part of the platform. So these are just four of the many components that are available in DataIQ, but they really kind of explain how powerful the, prepare, or the plugin itself can be, and all of the different ways that you can integrate it and extend DataIQ. And finally, I just wanna kind of bring this home as to why plugins are so powerful, and to start off, I think one of the really important things to note is how we have seen this with our customers day in and day out. Um, so recently, I was working with a customer, and they were br working on bringing a lot of their processes over, whether that be from manual or from pre-existing um, you know, tools that they were working on. And they needed to do something that wasn't available in DataIQ. And, and how often does that happen when you're working on a new platform, and you go to do something that you're used to doing somewhere else, and, and you simply can't? It's not, it's not there. And every platform is going to have this issue. Um, and so what they wanted to do in this instance was they had a, a table that was going to be dynamically changing within the recipe, itself, or within the, sorry, the flow itself. And they wanted to be able to use the output of that dynamically changing table to be able to query other tables that it were in their instance. And this isn't something that was a part of the, the data IQ platform. But because it was so important to them and it was kind of establishing a blocker, they weren't able to continue to migrate their work or to, to create their automation flows in the platform. Um, we worked hands-on with them and we were able to, in under a month, develop a plugin that completely circumvented this problem. Um, and this was really key for them to be able to continue moving their flows and getting everything automated within DataIQ. And this is something that they'll be able, able to continue to iterate on with the help of the DataIQ team um, or on their own if should they choose. But it's a way that not only myself, but all of the, the data scientists, all of the teams that I work with, are able to see how plugins are so crucial for customers when they run into a blocker like this. Secondly, it impacts every user. So whether this be someone who's focused on the input to the output to everything in between, or whether this be an administrator who's actually just trying to maintain the platform itself and, and keep, make sure that logins and information that's cluttering up the instance is not an issue. Plugins can really impact every user from the front to the end. And then finally, like I mentioned, one of the most crucial impacts of plugins is to create an agile and constantly evolving platform. No platform is gonna be able to consistently and constantly have the front cutting edge infrastructure or models available right away, fully supported. Because we're working on making sure that everything we release is going to be fully supported, it's going to be the best product that we can put out there. But plugins allow different teams and users to not only explain their own insights to outputs and, and consumers that are gonna be taking in those inputs and outputs and, and translating them into actually actionable items that they can bring forth and, and not only make sure that those people who are in the platform itself, the clickers and the coders, are able to, to ingest all of that information, but anyone along the way. Um, and so 
If this is interesting to any of you, I would very much recommend continuing your learning. Um, we have a Plugin Academy course called Plugin Development uh, that you can all register for and learn how simple it is to take some code um, and translate that into a simple visual interface for anyone who's using Dataiku. And that's all, thank you.